Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Dan Tui. I am your teacher for this online class in engineering ethics, fall of 2018 at Drexel University. I wanted to make a quick uh, welcome video, also an orientation video to let you know what you need to do for the course, how the course is structured, and to give you some idea of how I teach the course, um, the content of what we'll be doing, the different readings we'll be doing, and, and why I've chosen them. First of all, if we just uh, quickly dispense with the requirements of the course, they are um, very simple and simple by design. Um, there are, uh, there's a weekly discussion board. So if you go to the uh, week one, let's say the first week, we have our readings, NSP Code of Ethics. Uh, we have an, an essay on uh, questioning the, or discussing the issue of whether or not codes of ethics are actually useful. We have some videos that I've made, much like this one, and we have a discussion board. Uh, you do have to participate in the discussion board on a weekly basis. Um, I do not uh, typically um, give you a prompt or some kind of, uh, I don't even participate in the discussion board. I read it uh, and then I do uh, follow-up videos uh, every so often um, on highlights from the discussion board, responding to things, but I, you won't see me actually weighing in. And you won't see me giving you prompts. I think that, um, excuse me, I'm a smoker. Um, you, you, you won't see me giving you a prompt. My idea is that you will respond with whatever thoughts you have on the week's materials. So um, don't wait for me to give any kind of uh, guidance on that. Just to say what you have to say about the week's reading. You should make one substantive post of your thoughts, a paragraph or two or more, depending on what your thoughts are. And you should respond to uh, two other uh, students' posts during the course of the week. Um, we try not to backload the discussion board. We don't. The, the deadline for uh, participation is a Sunday evening, so this coming Sunday will be the deadline at midnight. But you don't want to wait till Saturday or Sunday to start posting. You want to post during the week so that we get some kind of discussion going, so that you, um, you know, so we can make it a really useful thing. So my, I encourage you to post as early in the week as possible, or to start posting. And then check in a few times during the week, respond to what other people are saying. Okay, so that's your first, uh, really your only weekly um, requirement is uh, participation in the discussion board. You click on it and something should come up, right? Yeah, just, just create a thread, start, start posting. Okay, so that's number one. Uh, number two, we will have um, three online exams, uh, which are basically reading exams. They won't take you more than, say, half an hour, 45 minutes, I think, typically to do um, questions about the reading, just basically to make sure that we're all sort of, you know, doing what we need to do. Uh, I don't think anything too taxing there, but there will be three uh, exams. You can expect them to be straightforward questions regarding the reading that will take between, say, half an hour or an hour to um, uh, probably 45 minutes will be the upper limit. Uh, ch you just check the, the timer when you before you take the exam. Um, but that's just a sort of basic sort of make sure that we're all sort of doing what we need to do. More importantly, you have three essays uh, due during the course of the class. The due dates will be on the assignments. Uh, as I say in the syllabus, the essays, uh, there is no uh, set subject. They just have to be your commentary, your ideas uh, on the unit's um, uh, materials. Okay, so the essays, uh, yes. Okay, so here we go. Students are expected to discuss critically some aspect of the readings, which means that basically you have to come up with your own topic. That's part of the assignment. What What do you think of these readings? What What do you What idea do you have about them? It doesn't have to be comprehensive about all of the readings, uh, but it does have to be relevant to uh, the subject matter. Okay, so what is the subject matter? You can check, you know, how grades and stuff will be. So what is the subject matter? Okay, so my idea of an engineering ethics class is that it is, an, it is a class in professional ethics, and that's how I teach it. And I try to be thoughtful about that because, and, and we'll see why, but basically uh, there's, I consider engineering ethics to be in the same family as 
medical ethics and legal ethics. That is, I consider the, that um, we're talking about here is a profession, engineering. And although, you know, that that's, again, part of the conversation, whether engineering really qualifies as a profession, whether it should, whether that would be even a good thing. Um, and, um, you know, wh whether or not, you know, what a profession actually is. So I think that uh, one of the best things to do in the first part of the course is to basically the first uh, three weeks is to look into the issue of, you know, what is a profession? What is, what is professional ethics? Typical questions would be, um, is there something about the professions? And here we're talking about paradigmatically law and medicine, but also other things like the military, the clergy, other uh, other jobs which have claimed the status of a profession are social work, library science, um, maybe a few others, and certainly engineering. Uh, if we look at the NSPE, the National Society of Professional Engineers, they have, I think, what is the most comprehensive and uh, thoughtful code of ethics, the NSP code of ethics. So we'll be looking at that. And so that's our sort of beginning is that, you know, this idea that engineering actually, well, of course, there are different engineering societies from different fields, and that's one of the problems. The NSPE is the society of, of PEs, you know, professional engineers, but, but its code of ethics is meant to cover all engineers, whether they're PEs or not, uh, no matter what their field is, anybody who calls him, him or herself an engineer, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, process engineer, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's a lot of engineers out there. Um, it is meant to be covered by this code. And the, the whole notion of a profession, um, kind of a having, an, a, having a code of ethics uh, is an important aspect of something which has the claim of being a profession. So we look at uh, week two. Um, which uh, follows up on this very interesting discussion by two, um, two authors, one a lawyer, the other a philosopher, Sighart and Downey, on the notion of professional ethics. Like, what would the basis of the claim that there is something called professional ethics, that there's a, there are special or unique ethical responsibilities that professionals like doctors and lawyers and maybe engineers have? Um, I, this is a very good set of a, a pair of essays that can really teach you a lot, I think, about you know, what, the, what the questions are. You know, what would it mean for something to be a profession and, and what are the implications of it to differing opinions on that. And then we'll finish up the first unit uh, by looking at uh, some BER cases. The Board of Ethical Review, as I hope that I will have explained in videos that I've made, uh, Board of Ethical Review is a really a teaching uh, institution within the NSPE that looks at real or fictional or semi-fictional cases involving, oh boy, sorry for the noise outside, uh, in involving uh, engineers who do things which may or may not be in violation of the code. Uh, these uh, are some sort of interesting matters, uh, some preliminary matters that maybe get you to be more thoughtful about what it means to be a professional and an engineer. Unit two will deal with the first canon of the NSPE code, the heart and soul of the NSPE code, which is the first canon. Engineers in the course of their professional duties uh, shall hold paramount the health, safety, and welfare of the public. Uh, this is the real, what makes engineering ethics unique is the first canon, this idea that we have a duty, not, not we, I'm not an engineer, that you have a duty to not only your clients, but society as a whole, which is a very unique thing. Doctors and lawyers don't have this. And, and so some thinking about the first canon, which has to do with, you know, again, the, the obligation of engineers to protect the public and to further the welfare of the public. Uh, that's really perhaps the most important aspect. So we'll read different essays having to do with that and then go back to some Board of Ethical Review cases in the last week. And that'll be the second unit. So after every unit, there'll be an essay and an exam. Finally, unit three, weeks eight through 10, 
uh, it's not one subject, it's actually two. Uh, first, we'll look at the question of uh, bribery. Uh, and then the question, the related question of uh, how engineers deal with uh, financial things like gifts. Look at a couple of BER cases. So we'll look at that aspect of the NSB code then involving bribery and gifts. And then we'll end uh, with uh, a student uh, paper that I got uh, a few years ago for an honors project by Thomas Templin, a graduate of Drexel, uh, wrote an excellent uh, research and philosophy article on um, the fourth canon. Well, the fourth canon is the, probably the second most in, important canon. Uh, so we'll see it may be in conflict with the first canon and it may need to be adjusted. There are some problems that it, uh, because of the unique nature of it, engineering work, the conditions under which engineers work, which is basically as employees for, for corporations and businesses, some of the challenges that that uh, poses to them also in their identity as professionals. So the third unit really doesn't talk about one thing. So your essay, you'll, you'll choose either to write about financial matters, uh, bribery, gifts, or um, the fourth canon. So that is the class. Um, we'll be using a lot of Board of Ethical Review cases, and we're going back to um, basically the philosophical literature and engineering ethics, having to do with different things. And the idea is, uh, frankly, that this is important, um, that whether engineering is a profession or not is really up to you to decide. But the idea is that an ethical component to an engineer's education, which is just meant to, to get she or he more thoughtful about the ethical responsibilities that are entailed by being an engineer, that that is what the course is meant to do. It, it, it's, of course, not a part of you learning how to be an engineer in a technical sense, um, but it is a really a rite of passage, I would say, for any professional or anything that claims to be a profession for its uh, members uh, to demonstrate uh, some ability to be thoughtful about ethical matters and to maybe learn how to you know, deal with them a little better. So that's what the course is about. You can get started with the first readings, uh, participate in the discussion board. Again, I won't be participating directly in the discussion board. What I do is after a week or two, I, I'm, as I'm reading through it, I make PowerPoints with things that I think are interesting or raise issues. So I will be uh, distributing to you follow-up recaps of the discussion board once uh, things get going on a semi-weekly or bi-weekly or tri-weekly basis but before you uh, take your first exam and um, certainly before you have to turn in your first essay. So uh, please take a look at the syllabus. It's very bare bones, very simple. Uh, if you have any questions about it, please contact me at my uh, Drexel email, dt46 at Drexel. If you have any questions and, uh, you know, welcome to the course.